Hi friends, this is Tina and welcome to my new video. In today's video we are of course making the last theme of this whole year 2022. It feels absolutely ridiculous that we are at the end of another year. I feel like the time did something really illegal this year because it just does not make any sense how it's already December. But here we are making the last theme in this bullet journal. And I'm really excited because of course December is going to hold new videos such as new bullet journal setup and also my old bullet journal split through for this year. So stay tuned for that. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves because today we are of course making the December theme and we're going to start with the cover page as always. So of course December and Christmas go to together but I don't really like to go for like really obvious Christmas themes in my bullet journal for December. I just don't feel like you know looking at a Christmas theme for the whole month so I decided to go for wintry and cozy vibes instead. For me like when I think of December and Christmas I don't you know think of those obvious Christmas colors such as greens, reds and like gold shades. I always try to uh, instead of look at it in a more cozy and warm way which I try to really encapsulate in this monthly theme and I really hope you can see that too. So I decided to go for some I don't know if this is a flat lay I don't think it is but these kind of still life pictures of blankets and hot drinks and books and these evergreen branches and that's really the vibe that I would try to go for with this theme. So yeah, we're starting the cover page by of course taping the edges of my painting and then we're starting with a really weird element in this painting because I feel like with this painting I was really chaotic. Usually I try to start with the farthest elements in my paintings but this time I decided to start with the marshmallows in this hot chocolate mug that is in the middle of my painting. For some reason my brain was just telling me to start from here so I decided to go for that. Usually when I'm making paintings that take a little bit longer I try to just go with whatever I feel like, not really just listening to these rules that I have set for myself at some point in my mind. So yeah, as you can see, I just, I'm just painting these marshmallows on the mug. I was looking at a reference photo, which I will link down below. I usually try to do this, especially on paintings like these, because the perspective and things like that, they're not really that easy for me yet. So it was much easier to just look at a reference photo, but I didn't really focus on it way too much. But you know, just the general shapes and perspective, like I said. So I was just painting these marshmallows individually. I tried to add a lot more darker colors in between them so they would have more shadows and I tried to really amp up the contrast so it wouldn't look too flat. And I also added some of these cocoa powder or maybe cinnamon on top of the marshmallows. I actually don't really know what you would add on top of them. Maybe it's cinnamon. Why would you add cocoa powder? I don't know. <laughs> So I was just having some fun with this one and then I started making the mug that the uh, hot chocolate is in and I tried to make it in this kind of reflective looking ways because of course it's like ceramic and it will reflect some light and things like that. So I made it with this uh, light gray color and I just added these darker shadows on the edges and on the bottom of it and then I also just added these white lines on it pretty randomly to create these little highlights that it's reflecting. I know by the way that this footage is really fast, I just had to speed up the footage a lot more than normally or at least a lot more than in some of my previous videos that I've posted kind of recently because I just had so much more footage this time. I spent quite a lot of time with all of my paintings for the month of December. I just really felt like it for some reason so I didn't really restrict myself with the time. Yeah, I just really had to speed it up because otherwise we would have been here for hours and yeah, I think I spent a little over three hours on this cover page, which is actually a lot less than I thought that I would spend with this one, but it of course is way too long for a video, so I had to really, really make it super fast. So apologies if that kind of annoys you, I know it's a little bit hectic. Along the mug we also have some of these random marshmallows on top of this board, maybe wooden board that we're going to be painting later and I also have some cinnamon sticks on top of that and then we have a book on the right corner and then we have some blankets and evergreen branches. 
I really love the color scheme of this theme. Like I said, I don't really like the obvious Christmas colors myself. I don't, of course, mind them with like other artist bullet journals or something like that. I just don't really like that in my own life. That's not my ideal Christmas vibe. So I went with these grays and browns and greens instead and i really love those neutral tones and also the warmth that there is in this theme because i think for example this cover page it has a lot more of these like gray tones but i still really like how uh, calm and soft it looks i i'm really in love with this cover page even though you haven't seen it fully yet <laughs> but I, I really think this is one of my favorite cover pages that i've ever done in my bullet journal which is really great because my relationship with my bullet journal this year and in the past couple of like months has not been the greatest so making a theme that brings me this much joy really just means a lot to me and i think that's just great Overall, I just really enjoyed this process of making this whole theme and especially this cover page. It can be seen from the fact that I did start from weird things in my paintings and I also did use really just like tiny brushes throughout this whole painting process. And I just really like to focus on the smaller details instead of rushing the painting process, which I think even though I love painting, sometimes painting in my bullet journal feels a little bit like forced for me sadly but this time it definitely didn't i had so much fun and i could have painted for longer but i still just felt like making a video with tons of paintings it's it's just not easy so the fact that i painted a couple of things in this theme and i love all of them i think that's a great thing and I think that's also a great way to end this year's bullet journal journey and just gives me a good feeling about this whole year and my bullet journal and I think that's a great place to start my next year's bullet journal as well. I really loved the look of different textures in this painting so on the bottom I painted this ribbed blanket and then I also painted this soft blanket kind of underneath everything that's the background of this painting and even though I know this is a little bit more realistic of a painting than ones that I have normally done in my bullet journal recently this didn't take that much time at all and it's still really nice and simple even though it has a lot of details that definitely took more time to paint but like altogether it didn't take that much time and it's really simple and just has this calming color scheme and yeah it was just a pleasure to work with this painting so there's this book on the right side and i just painted that with this sepia color and then i just uh, scribbled some tiny little text on top of it of course it doesn't say anything but i just used my tiny detail brush and made these little scribbles on top so it would look like an old book or something like that When I was making these blanket uh, textures and these greases in the blanket, I was just basically going in with one color and then I was using my damp brush just blending those creases into the lighter shade underneath. And that gave it this nice soft look as well, even though it was still a really easy step to do. It didn't take that much time at all. As a last detail in this painting, I made these pine branches on the sides of this painting and I just basically made them by making the brown branch first and then I took my detail brush and made these tiny green needles in the branch. So I basically just made the needles by going to all different directions and trying to make it really messy and full of them. I didn't want it to look really bare. So yeah, it was also another really fun thing to paint. It was really easy and I think it looked surprisingly like realistic without too much effort. So after my painting was done, I of course took out the tapes and then I started making my header for the December cover. 
I've been loving using stamps recently, they are just so easy and low effort way of making really nice and clean headers. So I took my really cheap flying tiger stamps again and I um, used them by coloring the stamps with my Figma brush pen and just stamping that onto the page. The ink pad doesn't really work that well so this is a much better way of doing that. Even though the cover page itself is now done, I'm going to be attaching this craft paper on the page next to my cover page. I was thinking about leaving it just empty like I usually do, but then I was like, wait, I could have done this all along. I could have just glued a nice colorful paper next to it and it would have looked so much better all this time. So I did that and I really like the softness of this cover page and how well the craft paper complements the painting that I just did. I just really like it. <laughs> But that is it for my cover page and now we will set up my calendar and also my tracker and playlist on the Dutch door next to that. So I did the exact same thing as last month. I repeated a lot of spreads this time. I'm sorry if you feel like that is boring to watch, but yeah, I did a lot of same things because I really enjoyed my last month setup and I used my blood journal a lot more than I have used lately. So that was a lot of fun. So first I cut out this little Dutch door on the right side and that will be this flap between my calendar and my tracker spread. Then I glued this green, brown, gray, whatever <laughs> color it is, onto that first spread, which is going to be my calendar. And I know this paper looks just brown here, but it's really more green in uh, reality. It's this kind of grayish green color, and I just really liked it with the cover page as well. I think the colors looked really good together, so I decided to go for that instead. And for the tracker spread underneath that, I decided to go for this kind of lighter colored craft paper instead of the one that I used with my cover page because that didn't really pop out from the green eye attached to the other side, so I decided to just go for that. Then I made my calendar grid with this white paper. I just decided to glue it in without really filming the process, but I used the same acrylograph shade that I used last month for the grid, which is cinnamon. I really like that color together with the green and brown tones. This is just a really simple minimalistic calendar spread, so I decided to just stamp the header on the right side. I wish I would have just uh, centered it better and I also wish I would have left this pine branch that I painted on the right corner just leaving that out you know I it's okay I think it would have just looked better like with this really really minimalistic look without it but it's okay I painted it anyway <laughs> And that was my super simple calendar. And then we are going to go to my tracker and playlist page. So on the playlist page, on the little flap on the left side, I decided to glue this really light colored uh, gray paper. It looks pretty much just white right here, but it's gray, I swear. <laughs> So on my tracker spread, like I said, I did the exact same thing as last month. I just stamped the header tracker on the top portion of this page and then I glued these small calendar grids on the page with this kind of white paper underneath. I first decided to use this green color as my header box, but I didn't really like the color after I had added it to the page, so I decided to just go with the same cinnamon color. I also noticed that I made the flap or the Dutch door a little bit smaller here than last month because I was just feeling like everything was so crammed together and it didn't really have that much space to write in between those uh, calendars. So yeah, I just noticed that I made it smaller than last month. <laughs> I also outlined the trackers header on the top and I just added all of my trackers for my uh, habit tracking for December. 
And on the left page, I added these brown craft paper rectangles as my kind of album covers, I guess. I also decided to draw these random little leaves and berries freehand on top. And then I also added the name of the song that I was listening to. And that's again a really simple spread that didn't take that much time at all. And next we're going to be making a spread that I haven't included in my bullet journal for a little while. So I decided to make a memory spread, but instead of just having those boxes for each day to write things down or glue things down, I decided to just have this empty page where I can just attach some receipts or tickets or whatever I feel like adding. And of course that depends also on what I'm doing that month, but I just decided to do this because sometimes I feel like I would love to have a space to just have all of my memories and even just print out pictures. So I decided to just leave it empty and on the lower right corner I decided to paint this coffee cup and of course if you have followed me for a little while you might kind of get these flashbacks from my November 2021 theme when I actually painted kind of something similar as to this month it was definitely more on the autumnal vibe and I also painted a lot of rainy windows which I didn't do this time but I did paint a lot of coffee cups so that reminded me of that Again, I cannot drink actual coffee, it's only decaf for me, so this is kind of ironic, but whatever. <laughs> I, I think cozy drinks are definitely something that I associate with winter, so works for me perfectly. First, I was thinking of making some sort of wintry landscape theme for December, but I decided to do this kind of theme instead because I just feel like I've been doing all of these landscape themes in the last couple of months. So I think I will go for some sort of winter landscape theme for probably January and February. So keep an eye out on those if you are more into that kind of snowy landscape theme. So I didn't really talk about the process that much, but as you can see, I painted the coffee cup and I painted these little bubbles on top of that kind of foamy um, thing on top. I'm not a coffee expert. I think that's just when you pour the coffee, it gets a little bit foamy. I don't know. <laughs> My boyfriend would know. So yeah, I just painted that and I painted the rim of the coffee cup and this gray plate underneath. I think the plate turned out to be a little bit too gray, but I just didn't feel like, you know, repainting it for the third time. So I left it like that. And I really love the look of those branches, as you could see when I painted it on my calendar spread as well. So I decided to add a couple of those into this painting too. I just really liked how they brought this green pop of color to my painting. And they also just kind of reminded me of winter a little bit more. So I decided to just paint them here too. And after I was done with my painting, I made the header on the uh, bottom of this spread. So I just stamped memories and wrote December on top of that. And after that, I decided, because I really left the craft paper, I decided to glue that on the edges of this whole spread. So I basically just glue it down and then I cut out the excess from the sides. So I made this border along the whole spread. I didn't really film the process well, but you know what I mean. <laughs> So this is my really simple memory spread and next we will make another really simple spread. I really just loved having these more practical spreads. Now in my bullet journal when I feel like I don't just have to make pretty spreads to post on Instagram, it's really sad that that even was the case at some point, but I really feel like most of the spreads that I did previously were ones that I just had to, you know, focus more on making them pretty because I was like the main thing was me posting about them. So now that I don't post about my bullet journal much on my Instagram, I feel like I can do whatever I want with it. So I'm definitely Definitely focusing on the practicality of the spread more than the actual look. So yeah, I still make pretty spreads, but it's just pretty in a different way, I guess. So again, a completely similar layout as to my last month's setup. I'm sorry, but I just glued these two different papers on each page and then I glued these white um, boxes on top where I can, you know, track something or just write about my month. 
so of course this spread is my monthly goals and my monthly review pages and i don't really know why i'm making a monthly review because i'm gonna be making a yearly review at the end of this year on my own but i decided to still leave that because of course i can still have some goals for this month and you know review how that went I added that cinnamon color on the top of all of my boxes this time too. I just sometimes have the issue with my acrylographs that they just feel so dry and I just have to kind of push them to the paper all the time but when I've been drawing with them for a little bit then the ink starts flowing a lot better so that was the case here too but it definitely took a little bit of time to you know get the ink flowing properly. I outlined all of my headers with my white jelly roll pen and then we are gonna go to my last spreads of this whole setup. So as I've done in my previous couple of monthly setups now I'm making a Dutch door weekly spread set for my whole month. So instead of having just one spread, one different kind of design for each week for all of my monthly pages, I am making one spread for the whole month with Dutch doors so I can just, you know, get ready for the month in advance without having to make really different designs for each of my weeks, which has helped me so much. So again, I'm repeating my layouts. I'm doing the exact same thing as last month. I feel like last month I was just in my genius phase and I did everything perfectly. So I had to just copy myself. <laughs> So in this spread I'm painting this cozy scene on the upper left corner and I'm painting it right now and soon as you can see when I'm done with the marshmallows in this painting I am going to be saying something that you will not be able to get out of your head for a while. They look like dry dog food. I was looking at this painting for the longest time when I was editing this and I was like there's something weird about those marshmallows and now I know that they look like dry dog food but I don't think they look like that in the end but <laughs> yeah I, I couldn't get that scene from my mind so you're welcome. But as you can see, I painted this snowy window in the back. I am really in the winter mood. We have had our first snow already and we currently have snow on the ground. So I wanted to paint a really nice and snowy scene behind the window with some uh, snow falling from the sky as well. And I also painted these window frames and a blanket behind the hot chocolate mug as well. I did pretty much the same things as I did in my cover page for this one. So there isn't that much else to explain. Now that there really isn't that much video left, I just quickly want to say to you that I'm so thankful for you being here following me for another year. This was my first full year of doing YouTube and I actually love it so much and I just love the community we have built here and the fact that you showed up for another year just commenting on my videos and liking them and just leaving me the nicest messages and being so supportive, that really means the world to me. You don't even know and just like me being able to grow with this channel and being able to do the things that I love and finding my love for them again after a couple of months of not really having that much passion for bullet journaling I've loved trying out new things and just showing you my art and showing you my bullet journal and teaching you how to do the same things as I'm doing and hearing that something that I've done has helped you that really means so much to me so I just want to thank you for being here for this year that has in many ways been hard like one of the hardest years at least for me so far but just having these people by my side who show up video after video i love you guys so much thank you for being here so i know i have said this before and i know this is a controversial opinion so don't get mad at me <laughs> but i'm not the biggest fan of christmas i don't know why i just don't love the christmasy vibes especially because in my life i have always pretty much just celebrated christmas on the christmas eve so for me like this getting into the mood of christmas like months in advance and buying a lot of gifts just isn't for me but i still love my christmas movies 
just actually when I was making this setup, I watched Madagascar and I know that that is not a Christmas movie by any chance, but for me, it's such a Christmas staple. I don't know why, but that movie is so Christmassy to me. And of course, I always watch Home Alone. Please give me your Christmassy movie favorites in the comments. I would love to know what kind of Christmas movies you watch. I also love a good wintry horror movie in the time of Christmas. So if you have any of those, please let me know. I would love to broaden my wintry Christmassy movie selection for this year. So I just took out the tapes and then I started working on the spread itself. So on the right corner I added some of that craft paper and then I started making my small calendar and my note section in the spread. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I just quickly want to remind you that there is a lot more videos to come in December. December is one of the busiest months for any content creators and I have a lot of videos to come, uh, more than the ones that I mentioned in the beginning. So please, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, now is the best time to do that because I am doing hard work this month getting as many videos out for you as I possibly can. So please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and also remember to like my videos if you like my videos that is always a great help for any person who is doing youtube <laughs> so on all of the flaps on the right side i'm making my task list for all the weeks and that is it for my whole setup for december and now we are going to quickly flip through all the pages that i made in this video Thank you so much for watching this video and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and leave a wintry or Christmassy emoji down in the comments so I know you watched until the end. Thank you so much for being here for another year and see you in my next video. Bye bye.